but try to move that one. Let's see if I can get in here. Uh, yeah, that's a heavy rock. So that, uh, we started it, and then it just takes Holy off. Holy cow! Yeah, once I it could, gets going, it's, I could definitely get behind that. It's, that's ha amazing. it's happening. They know they're going to be fast. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> so Greg spoils them. Oh yeah! Holy <laughs> cow, man! There's our first logo. <laughs> oh man. You said you're a, you're a frog guy. Yeah, right? look at that. <laughs> Beautiful tank. Look at these guys. And they're just used to people, they're chilling, hanging out. Yep. So this is this is the part that makes the money. Holy so the cow, man. Out there. But this is where we are shipping products all over the world. So this is designed to mimic no way. a natural cave. What? Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Parker's Swamp. Uh, today I'm at Aqualand, the home of uh, Aquascape. And we're going to be getting a tour and I'm also going to be doing a podcast episode on my other channel, Parker's Pensies, with uh, Ed Blue, Ed the Pond Professor. So uh, it's going to be an awesome one. Can't wait to get started. Let's jump right in. So was Pond Professor, have they always been calling you that? Or is that something for the YouTube? They have or? been calling me the Pond Professor probably for 20 years. So. Nice, okay, awesome. <laughs> ever since we started doing um, our Pondemonium, we, it used to be called Pond College. Yeah. Um, so everybody kind of just you know, talks, talks to me about I, yeah. I'm, I'm the science guy. So I love that. <laughs> Can you tell me about this this turtle over here, like yeah, the, yeah. the so tortoise? That's, uh, um, that's Ali the Aldabra, so that's at uh, um, Iguana Land down oh, in sweet. Uh, Punta Gorda, Florida. Yeah. Awesome, man. <laughs> that's so good. Yeah, right? Yeah. Well, Ed, so you grew up, well, we just did this this podcast. Um, yeah. You grew up looking in streams and rivers. And, uh, did you have like a favorite amphibian or turtle that really did it for you, or was it the whole thing together? You know what? It was kind of everything together. Yeah. You know, but I, I guess, you know, what kind of got me hooked was the Western painted. Oh, no way. So, yeah, catching those awesome. when I was a kid up in northern Wisconsin and stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah, it was just, Beautiful. Yeah, that red just stripe super and, yeah. Colorful and everything. Yeah. I just loved them. I used to, you know, when I was fishing with my dad, like I was always, like, I'd be fishing. I love fishing, but I would always have my snorkeling gear with me. Yeah. Like, all right, it's time for me to hop out. That's right. I was the same way, man. <laughs> and I would start snorkeling. Yeah. And I would point stuff out. I'm like, yeah, this, there's a hole over here, some bass over in this section. <laughs> That's awesome. And then I would be catching turtles and all types of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's so good. I love that. Well, I was, I was, uh, I'm geeked up for it. I don't know if it's still here, but you had all the baby painted turtles. Yeah, you guys film one. Yeah, Is that still got, here? We we have some. We released a bunch with uh, Kenan and his wife. Yeah, yeah. When they were in town. Mm -hmm. um, so a few of them were big enough. Uh, we do have some small ones still. Awesome. We, just, we still have them. Awesome. Well, let's go. Uh, let's there go take go. a look. All right. Look at that. Yeah. There they all are. Right. Man. Look. This is a beautiful tank. Look at these guys. And they're just used to people. They're chilling, hanging out, yep. doing their thing. Yep. Ed, man, so you, you you got these calcium things in here. You like those? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've never I mean, used them, but yeah, no, if I, I see think, you I doing think, it. I think it's an important part um, to add minerals back into the water because uh, because of the, pot, the, the processes... Um, it's recirculated water. Right. Um, we, it's not outdoors where you're going to yeah. get natural nutrients coming in and right. compounds. Um, you have to keep that stuff in because they're going to need it. You yeah. know? I mean, it's, it's getting broken down. It's being consumed in the biological filter. You're yeah. using your carbonate. Yeah. It's gone. Okay. This is our retail store. So this is where the general public is going to come into our facility. They can actually see firsthand what we do. Mm -hmm. We didn't originally have this. So originally, we basically just had a reception desk. Yeah. And then it, all of a sudden, it's sort of a customer service. And we realized right away that people were coming in because they saw this incredible building as yeah. they would drive by. Right. Like, oh my gosh, we're missing the boat. We have to showcase actually what we built. So we created a series of different little gardens um, so people can come in and see firsthand for themselves what a, a, a properly designed and built water feature would look like. Yeah. Oh, there, there we go. There's Woody. <laughs> look at that shell, man. He's a beast. He's a beast. So I did one at uh, at John's, and so we saw where where Woody came from. Oh, cool! Yeah, yes. John's the man. I love that guy. Yeah, Going back to sure. watch the the babies hatch this oh, year too, nice. in a month or so. Look at that. Oh, he's a beast. How'd those uh, plants end up doing? Did he, did he uh, beat he them up pretty good? He destroyed them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. We got a couple still. <laughs> Here we go. Dustin's fish tanks. Yeah, he's like a, he's like a, he's a bulldog. Dude. Yeah, just a monster. <laughs> so he got out that night, right? Yeah. Well, what was the deal? Did, was it the rocks that were piled up? I or? think it was a combination of the rocks, but it was also um, kind of, it was May. 
It yeah. was mating season. Oh, that's his time, man. So I think he was. I think it was the. A, it was like the perfect storm. Yeah, he's looking we for it. things, and then all of a sudden he's like, I gotta get yeah, out. Yeah, looking here. for a big female. <laughs> yeah, in the spring things are changing. Yeah, that's great. Man, so this guy was just chilling in John's John's pond. Now he's here and he's educating kids. We got a soft shell turtle in here. Oh, nice. Yeah, he buries himself down. Sure. Same as pancake. <laughs> yeah, I had a pancake when I was when I was young. Putting out a green roof. Um, we were talking in the podcast about uh, about stormwater runoff. Right. So we have over two hundred thousand square feet of roof. Okay. So that's over that's four acres. You know, four and a half acres of yeah. of, uh, of roof. One inch of rain, twenty seven thousand gallons of water. Right. So when you blow it out, a traditional roof, the water rainwater falls on it and runs off instantaneous. A green roof has a soil profile. Now the rainwater falls on it and it soaks into that soil and it slowly discharges over many days. Yeah, man. Man. All right, so there's, you have like a, not a philosophy, but it's like a, a program for how much rock to put in and how many plants. When you put in like a big log, um, is that going to affect the water parameters a lot? All the, like tannins, do you have to consider that stuff? Yeah, you definitely do. So on a smaller feature, the tannins could are going to react a little bit quicker because they're going to break down from uh, by, just by dilution. And okay. Down. So we want to be careful of the different species of logs. So like um, black walnut okay. is high in tannic acid. Yeah. Uh, some of the oaks can be high in tannic acid. Cedar uh, can be high in tannic acid. So what I try to do is find logs that have been a little bit more weathered yeah. so that they've actually spent a little time out in the environment because it leaches out a lot of those organics. Right. Um, but then what I'll do is I'll put it in the pond if I believe it's a problem. I actually like the look of a tannic water. Me too, it looks I think great. It looks great, yeah. I think it's supernatural. Um, I think it actually inhibits algal growth. Okay. It, it limits your sunlight penetration yeah, right. down in. Um, so I think it's. A, I think it, I like the look of it. So um, if you don't like it, I'll add in oxidizing agents to break it down or activated carbon to remove some of those tannins. Okay. But uh, what I like about adding that is we talked earlier about biomimicry. Yeah. When you go to a natural ecosystem, you're going to see rock, you're going to see gravel, you're going to see sand, you're going to see logs, you're going to see water lilies. So the more different um, things you could have in the water, it creates a more stable environment. Yeah. Okay. The one thing I don't see is is leaves. Is that is that getting leaves? sucked up by the? Uh... It is. So we okay. have a large. So all of this water. So yeah. that waterfall is 100,000 gallons per hour. Of water oh flow. man. And then yeah. we have our wetland filters as well. So all of this, just like that watershed in in Illinois, all our water goes basically to the ocean. Yeah. So this overflows, goes through that little narrow space goes into the bigger pond and all that is swept over into a 30,000 gallon rainwater catchment system. Yeah. So that's where all the leaf debris ends up. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic. So have you ever been out to Galena, Illinois? Yeah, sure. So the big bluffs and everything were meant yeah. to mimic north, uh, the driftless zone, that northwestern corner that the glaciers never hit. Okay. And then as you go south, it gets shallower, so that's meant to mimic oh, more of man. southern Illinois where you have more water lilies, we got logs, we got aquatic vegetation. Yeah. That's amazing. How do you get rocks like this? Like, did, did you go somewhere and say, I, I hand, like this rock? I handpicked all those rocks. So actually, <laughs> I shouldn't good. say me. So Greg right. and I actually handpicked these rocks. Yeah. Um, we went down to Missouri um, and worked with, uh, with one of the suppliers down there that has a bunch of property. And we went out on their property and literally picked all these uh, out, especially these big giant ones. Yeah. So the big one on the left of the waterfall yeah. weighs uh, 45,000 pounds. <laughs> so it came on a semi truck by itself. That's amazing. Yeah, Holy we had, cow. We had two excavators set it. Yeah. It was nuts. Well, so one thing that I've noticed with you guys too, uh, and I just kind of pick it up myself, but you get this huge massive rock, someone pays for this massive rock, then you got to bury it. Yeah. Do people get upset about that? They're like, <laughs> man, I paid all this money. It, it has to be that big to look cool it and does. stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For but sure. you, you buried this rock that like you spent all, you know? I, I know. It's all part of the design though, but that, that's all stuff that we discuss with our clients and yeah. we tell them the construction processes and everything. Yeah. And <laughs> it's just the nature of it, the nature of the beast. All right, Ed, so we saw, we saw some of the roof up here. Yep. We saw some of the plants. Yep. We saw a bird's eye view of this amazing, all these huge rocks. Uh, what's next, man? Where are we going? Let's, uh, let's go take a walk. We'll go inside. Um, got to see uh, the locker room system we have. So Greg has got a great philosophy for business. Hop yeah. On in. All right. 
and that is work hard, play hard. Yeah. So we have uh, a full, a full blown gym here. Yeah. For people to work out. We just completed the Aquascape Olympics. Oh so man. We had all these Olympic events during the Olympics. In yeah. Tokyo. Oh, I did see that. <laughs> so we just saw the locker room. I'm trying to be careful because YouTube was going to hammer me for music, but I'm talking over it. Hopefully, you don't hear it too much. This place is uh, wild. Uh, Ed was telling me about Greg's philosophy: work hard, play hard. They had uh, they had some Olympics going on during the Olympics. Uh, just fantastic. So, uh, Ed, where are we heading right now? So we're going to go into the warehouse. Okay. We're going to go check out some of the other sport courts and other amenities that we have here. Awesome. So this is this is the part that makes the money. Oh, <laughs> so the oh man! Up there, but this is where we are shipping products all over the world. Yeah. Uh, out of this location, we have another location in Canada. It's a little bit smaller than this, actually a lot smaller. Um, but we want to support all of our contractors and, and, and customers basically everywhere. Yeah. So you can tell we got some empty shelves here because we're in the middle of the season. Yeah. So we have orders coming in and going out. You see all those boxed up things? Yeah. Those, each one of those long rows is basically a semi truck. So oh snap! Semis. Nah, that's awesome. <laughs> we have semis coming in and then going right back. Wow. Up to the okay. Park. And we have another little lounge area. Like I said, work hard, play hard. Oh so yeah. This is kind of an, oh, somebody <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> so that's what it's for. Take yeah, back, right. Back, relax. Oh man. Uh, we have a little beer set up in here, so we have people over. We got. You got uh, pool we up got there. Pool. We have air hockey. Air hockey. Ping pong. We mm. got uh, deer buck hunter. We got. Uh, <laughs> that's we got awesome. <laughs> shuffleboard. There we go. Oh, shuffleboard's <laughs> the best, man. <laughs> that's awesome. Then we have a uh, little racking system, so when people are out there using it, you can throw your. Throw oh your sure. Beer. Volleyball court. You got ski ball right here too. That's important. Okay. Can't miss that. So full volleyball court or racquetball. Most people play volleyball. Okay. Full basketball. This is set up as a sport court, so we can play uh, volleyball as well as tennis. Man. Uh, we have a we have a batting cage over on the other side. Yeah. So we'll work with a lot of the local um, high schools and sports teams. We'll open up our facility. We want to be good stewards to the community. Yeah. So we're here. We employ a lot of people in the area. We also want people to come here and utilize it. Right. So uh, different clubs will come out. Guys will come out and use the batting cages. We have people that will come and use our indoor soccer court for, for practice. Yeah. Man. You got MJ up here. You got to have MJ, right? Got to. We're to the stars. <laughs> <Or> Chicago. That's right. <laughs> This is awesome. So, yeah, a lot of people would think, okay, you guys are the pond builders, but yep. like even more so, you guys are the pond suppliers. Correct. Yeah, so we started out, so our roots are a design build firm here in Chicago. Yeah. So we wanted to design and build in the Chicago Land era, but what we quickly realized was we had an incredible knowledge that no one else actually had. Right. So we had landscape contractors would come in after us. We would build a pond, okay. a landscape contractor would come in after to kind of plant everything up, and they would see the pond and say, oh my gosh, where did you get that little box, the skimmer? Oh yeah. And we're like, well, we're, we make them at our own shop. And they're like, well, I have, a, I have a friend who has a pond, can I just buy that from you? I'm like, well, you can buy it from us, but you don't know how it works or how it functions. Why don't you join me on the next project? I'll show you yeah. how it works. And we started educating and teaching landscapers how to install our equipment and it's exploded. Awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. Yeah, when we started back in the uh, early 90s, there was nothing available for a professional contractor. Yeah. So all the information, all the stuff was coming from Europe and it was hasn't changed in many, many years. So we came up with our own that own our own recipe for success with water features. Yeah. Well, man, this warehouse is huge. Um, it's large, but it's also really big because you got on top. You got uh, it's a green roof. Green roof. But then also you got space here Correct. that you you could be squishing even more supplies. Yeah, exactly. But you got something for the community it's here too. It's super important. You know, like it's, we, uh, you spend a lot of time at work. Yeah. You know, so at one o'clock, the warehouse is shut down. It's actually a little hot today, but I guarantee it'll be at the upper point. <laughs> That's so great. So we'll open up to everybody. I, yeah. I think more actually injuries happen here. Yeah, I'm sure. Time. I'm sure. <laughs> Look, it's a little heated, right? Yeah, right. It's got to. Oh, man. We didn't always have the uh, net. Oh, yeah, it's a smart one. And, uh, then all of a sudden, we hit one of those sprinkler heads one time. <laughs> and we Just have a lot of water dump in, and it's like, okay, you got to invest in the net. Yeah. Man, yeah, that's like huge. Greg was. Uh, 
at our very first warehouse um, at lunchtime, um, some of our guys would go out and play soccer in the in the parking lot. Yeah. So Greg's like, someday when we build our 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 dream home, he's like, I'm gonna build the, yeah. I'm gonna create an indoor soccer park. I love that. And you know, eighty thousand dollars later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man. But it's like I said, you spend a lot of time at work. Um, yeah. During when my boys were younger, they're old now, but I would bring them here and uh, we would play football and in, in winter time and yeah. you know, during winter you know winter months come here and hang out yeah. we have uh, a lot of employees will have sleepovers here have kid parties here. yeah we have everything we have all the amenities yeah you got a gaga ball thing here <laughs> holy cow play Ford square jeez <laughs> or nine square or whatever yeah that's like that's a big one that's a lot of squares man holy cow yeah. this is fantastic actually i built this with greg's son uh blake he built this thing one on a weekend yeah, this is high quality, man. You guys, <laughs> you guys do everything right. Holy cow! Yeah, that's fantastic. All right, so we, we saw up top here. Uh, where are we going now? So now we will go and make our way down. I, I want to show you the uh, the waterfall grotto. Yes. Which is behind the main waterfall, which is incredible. And then we got to go check out those Midland Turf. Got to. All right. <laughs> There's our first logo. <laughs> oh man! You said you're a, you're a frog. Guy, yeah, so look at that! Holy cow! Fly. I mean, that's it. That, yeah, that's who we are. Yeah. Uh, but this is our, our corporate training. So we have contractors coming in from around the world uh, throughout the year, and we'll set up uh, training events here. So this is for smaller groups, not Pondemonium. This is what we call Aquascape Academy. Okay. So up to 50 people maximum. We'll come in here. We have a couple days of intense training, um, getting people kind of uh, introduced to water feature installations. Yeah. yeah. That logo is so is crazy. Awesome? I love that. Right? Man, it used to be on the outside of the old, our old building. This is called Marmolium. It's made out of recycled rubber compounds. Oh, okay. Um, all the desks were made by steel case, all recycled aluminum. Um, we have bamboo flooring, oak flooring. Um, so we have natural light coming in in all different places. Right, right. Um, the lighting system has a sensor on it where it increases or decreases the, uh, uh, the lumens according to the time of the day. That's perfect. That's great for like your body and stuff, yeah. going to sleep and all that. Like, wow. Yeah, so as the sun tracks from east to west, uh, everything changes. We have natural lighting because of the green roof. We have permeable pavement. So our entire truck dock area so we have all those semis coming in on a daily basis right we have almost an acre of permeable pavement there to allow rainwater to soak into the soil oh that's, that's great permeable pavement so we were able to get a lead silver facility uh, uh rating okay and i've worked on multiple lead projects over the years yeah actually the greenest building um i was involved with phipps conservatory mm -hmm. um part of uh it was through the University of Pittsburgh, I believe. I think it's connected with them. But it was the greenest building in the world. <laughs> uh, we did all the rainwater capture systems Man. and stormwater lagoons. Um, that was the greenest. That was probably five or six years ago. I'm sure that somebody else beat them out by now. Yeah. But it was uh, um, the first recipient of the Living Building Challenge, which you're basically almost you're carbon neutral. You yeah. Know? It's like you're taking everything into consideration. Man, that's fantastic. So this is obviously this is Greg's, Greg's office. office. Yeah, 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 for sure. Ohio State, everywhere. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Everywhere. He's got a lounge up on top, fireplace, yeah. he can kick back, he can do, do his, uh, all of his work. He's constantly on the phone with customers all over the world. Yeah. Um, he can do all of the social media and everything from there. He's got his own little private spot here where you feed the fish. I just saw one of those koi jump. Yep. Holy cow. Yep. You ready to come here? Yeah. <laughs> they know they're going to be fed. I see it. <laughs> so Greg spoils them. Oh yeah, holy <laughs> cow, man. He's out of town, so I'll take over for him. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Right? But they have tons of natural food here, obviously. Right. They can forage, they, right. you know, they're, they're bottom feeders. Yeah. Uh, but supplementing them is good, and we want big fish, we're unhealthy fish. Yeah. Absolutely zero duckweed. I'm sure anything oh, God, drops nothing. in there just absolutely gone. Destroying that. <laughs> That's great. Yep. Little um, outdoor terrace. This is a sustainable feature. This is getting a little bit of wa little worn. Yeah. Underneath this patio is a 3,000 gallon tank. Wow. So this is permeable pavement. 
So when rainwater falls on it, there's 12% void space between all these little bricks. Water could seep its way through. There's a rubber membrane going underneath the entire patio. Oh man. So every drop of water that falls on it goes through a layer of limestone and it goes into an underground tank that's in this corner. Wow. Once we have that water captured, we have a little uh, bubbling rock. We could use that water for irrigation. There's actually a, a frog that lives here full time. <laughs> he tucks himself under it. Probably not going to be there now that I say it. Just a little, little green truck. He himself in between all that stuff. And that's his little, I mean, this, when we talk about a microcosm, like this is his whole house. Yeah, he can right. He go anywhere, but he loves it. Right. Because he's got everything. He's got water, he's got bugs that are coming Yeah, bugs here. are coming like through. Cool little habitat. That's so cool. It's the reason I have that bubbling system. So by putting in an underground reservoir, it doesn't actually connect you to the stored water. Yeah. So by bringing it to the surface, it makes it biologically available. Yeah. Now it, the pollinators, the bugs, birds, everything could access the water. That's fantastic. And it keeps the water in a lot better condition because it's being recirculated. Yeah. It keeps dissolved oxygen high. Can they, uh, you're talking about Chicago in our podcast. Chicago's got a huge one of these way down. Yep. Should they do anything like that with the bubbler or anything? I met with the city of Chicago, actually, with, yeah. uh, um, uh, with the, what is it called, the Metropolitan Sewage District, MSD, and we talked about doing, so their, their system that they created is huge. Right. The water doesn't Gigantic. stay in it that long. Okay. So they're going to drain it down because what they don't want to have happen is they get kind of caught in a bad situation when you get back-to-back -back rains. Okay. They can't draw it down too fast full, enough. yeah. So it's actually too small. Yeah. So the tank that they built is, and I, it took 50 years to build it. Yeah. And it costs, I don't know how many billions, it's too small. Yeah. Um, so what I proposed to the city was do hundreds of thousands of these little ones yeah. in front of every home. So instead of, so what we live in right now is called centralized infrastructure. Okay. We have a big grid of stuff that is managed on a, on a larger scale from a municipal se uh, standpoint. I would like to do decentralized. Yeah, man. Decentralized is the water that falls on your property stays on your property. Yeah. And you utilize it. You want that. That's my water. That's my water. Exactly. Since talking with you, I've thought about that. This is my water. I don't want it pumped out to Mexico. I want my water. Anybody. Yeah. So one of the largest dead zones in the world. Are you familiar with the dead zone out in the Gulf of Mexico? No. It's a, another environmental disaster, kind of like the Salton Sea. Yeah. It's because of all the rainwater runoff that has been rerouted through the Gulf, up through the Mississippi River, Illinois River, yeah. picking up all the agricultural runoff. Yeah. So water is really unique. Water is known as the universal solvent. Okay. So more things are going to dissolve in water than any other compound on planet Earth. It's right. a dipole. It has a positive and a negative charge. Okay. So it's going to pick up um, all types of fertilizers, pesticides, hydrocarbons, all this stuff that is on our li livable world. Cars driving down the road, oil dripping off it, you name it. All that stuff gets washed off, which yeah. is good because right. it keeps our earth clean, but all it does is take it from one place and it puts it in another. And concentrates it in one spot. It. Yeah. So traditionally, like a septic system, it would slowly dissipate into the soil where it could be broken down. Right. Now we're, we're overloading the system and there's a dead zone out in the Gulf of Mexico that's huge. Jeez. And uh, no fish can survive. Man. No shellfish, no shrimp. The fishing industry is taking a beating. Yeah. And it's, it gets, you could actually literally watch it grow. It's an anoxic zone. Yeah. There's no dissolved oxygen because of all the bacteria and gunk that has been washed anoxic. down. Anoxic, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's around every major uh, river around the world, you're going to find one. Wow. And that's anthropogenic. So that's man made. Right. We got to stop that, man. Yeah. Keep me all worked up. I know. Don't, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> I even go more on it. Yeah. We'll focus on the beauty. Yeah. Uh, outdoor seating, our signature waterfall, but this is my favorite part. Yeah. So designing this was a blast. I had a lot of fun. Greg gave me full creativity. I wanted to create this. Again, if you've ever been to Galena, yep. kind of a little hidden area, yep. rocky outcropping, sandstone. That area, so um, limestone uh, geography is known as, uh, as karst geology. So uh, rainwater will dissolve away the minerals in the limestone. It's very porous. Um, you can see it actually gets worn. It gets mosses growing all over it. But you're going to find caves in those type of areas. Yeah. Because rainwater is going to get funneled through these areas, and it literally dissolves away the rock. Yeah. And it leaves pockets. Holy cow. So this is designed to mimic no way. a natural cave. What? And if, if, if it's hot enough and if you have your bathing suit, 
I was I was sitting there last week, literally. Man. We actually created this as a weeping wall specifically. Yeah. So above got us moss. is the river system that goes over. Yeah. We actually made holes in the rubber liner. We're stealing a small portion of the water, and we dribbled it in to create yeah. this weeping effect. And this is what you would see in a natural cave. Right. In the winter time, there's a massive ice formation that comes out. Oh right man, that's it awesome. Looks insane. Yeah, this is beautiful. It's meant to look like kind of an old cave. We got some, it's actually a big concrete box. Yeah. And then we did all natural stone around it. Man. All the rock, all dry stack, no mortar. Okay. So this is like old school stuff that uh, the Incas did, you know. Yeah, like, big time, man. Two feet two and right. you know, out in the, uh, the Egyptians, etc. cetera. So no mortar, it's all how it's all stacked together. Man, that's awesome. Wild tubs all set up. Uh, so this is mimicking more of the Amazon. Could use a little bit of maintenance on there. Oh, it looks nice. I love, I love that. Look, I know you're not, you're supposed to be clean and everything. It looks great. I love when you can see life in there. It, it's real world, right? Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, cichlids in here. Yeah, that's really nice. Great piece of wood in there. Holy yeah, cow. Yeah, that something? Man. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Just a window in. <laughs> Oh, I love that. I've always wanted a pond like this. This is like the dream. <laughs> so you can look. I want to look at it from the Absolutely, side. Absolutely, right? Yeah. You get it, man. It's amazing. It uh, took, took a little bit of engineering. Yeah. That's what I did at George's house. So okay. What's, uh, how many gallons is this again? This is 6,000 gallons. 6,000. Do you got to worry about um, humidity and stuff like that with uh, something like because this? Because it's part of a huge warehouse, we yeah. don't. Yeah. But normally, if this was in a smaller enclosed building, we definitely would. I've seen you build a couple in people's homes. Yep. Kind of, I mean, smaller scale of this. Yeah. How do they dehumidify that? Dehumidifiers. Okay. Yeah, literally, okay. that's it. Just set it up, but we have a constant, so a lot of them have an internal tank inside those right. dehumidifiers. Right. Use the them. tube. We just have a tube going right into okay. a sump pit, and then it just takes okay. carbon. I got that in my basement right now. I got a bunch of tanks, set it up for kids to come through, yeah. but we had to get a dehum because everything's getting moldy. Yeah. 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 If you stay on it right away in the beginning, you'll be fine. Okay. Awesome, man. So what, do, what happens with these uh, these koi? Is this... The, these, are, these are actually... Uh, actually, I believe all these ones are part of Greg's private collection. Nice. I think a few of them are for sale. Okay. So we'll have some signs oh, look at that. pictures of them and things like that. So yeah. some of them are for sale, but most of these are Greg's collection. Okay. Awesome. That he picked out in, in Japan, so he does not want to... Oh, them. yeah, for sure. The carpet python. Look at that guy. Man, that's nice. These, these ones are all for sale in here. You guys got all the YouTubers up there too. Look at oh, that. Oh yeah. The whole wall, man. Right? That's fantastic. Yeah, it wraps around a little bit. <laughs> That's crazy. Logan Paul's up there. Wow. What do we got here, Ed? These are all koi for sale. Okay. And then this is all one big system and it's a wetland filter Oh yeah, look there. at that. That's great. So that's actually filtering the water for all of this. Okay. I, I would assume that koi are produce a lot of waste. They do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, large koi specifically. I mean, koi in general do, uh, but the amount of nitrogenous waste is going to be high. So we have to make sure that we have the right biological filtration set okay. up to break all that down. Yeah. And um, what, what do you got? What, what are those? So plants we're putting here? in some plants in there because. So what's going to happen? We could break down. Uh, ammonia, um, nitrate gets a little bit more tricky. So nitrate you can get rid of by water changes. You can also get rid of it by green plants. So we put in some right. grow lights. We have some green plants in here yep. um, to try to get some of that nitrate removal. Okay. The other way to get rid of nitrate is through uh, anaerobic digestion or a breakdown. So That's we do gravel? have anaerobic pockets inside. Okay. Because okay. yeah. like typically, you know, I, I got into like uh, guppies, live bears and stuff yep. like that, just for the alligator snappers. But they'll always talk about, you know, nitrate uh, ammonia turns into nit nitrite, nitrite and, and then, then that nitrite, turns into nitrate. nitrate and they use like sponge filters and stuff like yeah, that Yeah, but it's still it can build up it's hard to get rid of nitrate right. so you could the, the the sponge filter is aerobic it's yep. going to use it and then you're going to have the anaerobic and that's going to be in the sand and the gravel right. that's going to be in the deeper gravel okay. and things and that's going to be the anaerobic component and so you got bacteria to break down the nitrite Yep. Will plants eat nitrate or only nitrate? Uh, no, they, they can. Okay. Um, plants are gonna will will can take up uh, ammonia directly, nitrate oh, okay. directly, nitrate. Um, algae is fantastic for doing that. Okay. Algae, you know, algae is, has adapted and can grow on a wide variety of nitrogen awesome. compounds. Okay. And and uh, you talked about green water. I know a lot of people with ponds get so upset. Yep. The the fish guys love green water because they feed it to all the stuff they feed to their Nutrient fish. Rich. Right? It's the starting of everything. It's the building blocks of life in an ecosystem. Yeah. So, 
by having that green water, it's a, it's a, it's a broth of life. Yeah. So by adding it in, I mean it jump starts the entire system. Okay. But it can, you know, if you get too much of it, obviously it's going to stop sunlight penetration. Okay. It's wa water will get warmer, dissolved oxygen could drop. You could have some swings. That's, yeah, that's that whole thing you're talking about, man. That's it goes it. up and down. It's a roller coaster. Yep. That's yeah. It. That's so crazy because it gets so thick that it stops sunlight. Sunlight, and that's what it needs. That's what it yeah. needs. Man, crazy. You got a big picture of Shaq there. Love that. Oh, there we go. Is it a spiny or smooth? Uh, I think Some kind of stuff, I thought it was a spiny. Okay. Yeah. I love it. I was just hanging out. So this, we have become kind of a refuge. Yeah, I figured you'd, you'd have to be. It's because people know us and all of a sudden they just start bringing turtles. Yeah. And they're like, we can't handle this anymore. Do you guys want to take it? I'm sure like... the amount of red ears in here is just crazy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's when I, I talked with Greg from Greg's Turtle Haven. Man, pick a different turtle. Yeah, pick right. a different turtle. Right. Yeah, just we, we got a lot of yep. red ears, so we don't yep. need any more. Yeah, you can't see them. That's a Mata Mata. Oh, no way. Yeah. Bearing down in here. Though. Okay. So there's about uh, 8 to 12 inches of sand underneath that gravel oh, for nice. him to kind of get down inside and stuff. Yeah. So is that is that a, um, a principle that you use? You'll, you'll put sand underneath the uh, gravel? It, it depends it on the animal. Okay. Yeah, it depends on the animal. Like for koi ponds and stuff like that, no, I'll, I'll keep it relatively thin. But for certain species, yeah, we'll go with big beds. Okay. Underneath river systems. It's a hyporheic? A hyporheic, yeah. Rheic. So there's like some weird interactions that actually occur, occur where you're transferring um, nutrients and compounds and things going back and forth that we fully don't understand. Yeah. But it's there. It's there for a reason. You know, yeah. like like we were talking earlier, you know, God created this incredible environment for us. Yeah. And, and I don't even know if we're ever going to figure it out, but we know <laughs> there's stuff happening there. Right. And as soon as you cut it off, yeah. you see a ripple effect and it goes, usually goes bad. It's like, yeah. all right, there, there's there for right. a reason. So. That's what's cool. Because you, yeah. you obviously, I mean, from the podcast, from this you can tell you know the, uh, much of the science and there's still so much oh. that you just go, look, nature does it, so I'm gonna copy that yeah. and we'll figure out later why it's working. Yeah, no, I yeah. know this much. I mean, <laughs> you, you can get multiple PhD degrees in this yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> it's and we crazy. talked about, yeah, there's herpetologists, right. ichthyology, and all those guys. Yeah. They need to work Phytologist, together, obviously. Mycologists, but... ornithologists, and yeah. the list is long. Yeah. And, but they just focus on that one species. And, right. And again, that's where I got turned off on that years ago. Um, in my first ecology class, as soon as I started learning about all the different connections, I'm like, how could you study one thing without, right. without studying all of them? Because when you want to figure system. that question out, you go, oh, well, you know, this turtle, he eats Helgramites. Right. And that, well, why is there no Helgramites anymore? And they have to go through the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I have a funny story about a Helgramite. I did a big swimming pond for a family out in uh, Nebraska. And uh, he sent me a picture of a Helgramite. Yeah. He's like, what is this thing? He's like, it bit my son. I'm like, that's awesome. And he's like, what do you mean? It bit my son. I'm like, that's a Helgramite. I'm uh, like, that's like, that's like the pinnacle. Like, right, they're did super, it. super picky yeah. for water quality. They're living in trout streams. Yeah, they right. need unpolluted water. They yeah. need very low nitrate. Yeah. Like, they ain't going to make it. No sediments. Right. And I'm like, that's perfect. He's like, really? I'm like, absolutely. He's like, okay. Dang, that's so <laughs> like, cool. I know, right? I <laughs> yeah, totally that. cool. Yeah doing design work for blinding turtles and he got a plot of land at the Brookfield Zoo. Oh yeah, I've seen that. I've seen videos of that. And uh, yeah, it's kind of back behind. It's not open Just anybody. fenced off. It's all yeah. fenced off. Yeah. And we were, they, they have a natural, uh, a main natural pond and we were going to pump water out of that into a series. I've never, I never saw it if it got finished, but we designed up a series of little cascading pools that yeah. kind of meandered together. but. They had the flexibility to actually, they had standpipes in them. Yeah. So they could increase or decrease the water according to different times of the year. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Give so them to migrate back to the large migrate pond. to the deeper water during the winter time, yeah. have them go up into the shallow marshy areas during the summer yeah. for feeding and everything. Yeah. And then also uh, areas where you could, where they could segment them off for breeding. Oh, great. Yeah. So um, I want to keep stuff outside. Um, Kenan's talked about that. Greg yeah. from Greg Strohaven. Uh What's the depth? Blending's like shallow, shallow. but yeah. you got to go like six, probably six feet to, no. so it doesn't freeze. No, so they're gonna they're gonna go uh, if you went down to three feet. Dude, that's why that's minutes. what I thought, but so yeah. everyone's giving me a hard time. Totally fine. They, like our, our ecosystem ponds, uh -huh. we get the thickest ice I've ever measured was nine inches. Because it, yeah. to me, it, it's it's like it depends on the size of the, like if 
if you go up to Wisconsin, they got 14 inches of ice right. on huge lakes, but not on the ponds not on around the, the ponds, area. Correct. It's okay. Because the geothermal activity of the of the surrounding soil. Yeah. So the water, thick layers of water, will get thicker ice. Yes. But I like I've gone out on this big pond here. I've gone on my personal pond, and I take I'll take an auger bit, and I drink right. I was thinking about doing that this year. Mid January, after days of well below zero, yeah. and the thickest I've ever measured was nine inches. And that's so great to hear, dude, because sometimes we'll get up. We got like negative 50 with wind chill yeah. a couple years back. Yeah. Still, good. still good. I love that. So my dreams of having blandings out, yeah, it's still, it's still could happen. Not a problem. Totally okay. not a problem at all. Man, I love that. I love that. <laughs> so exciting. That's fantastic. Um, you know, we're always looking for um, new people to come into it where we could share information. So we have so much knowledge and passion about this stuff. Right. I just think it's going to be the right person to get alongside of us yeah. um, that could actually pick it up and run with it and take it to that next yeah, level. Yeah, with the same kind of but, vision, but just carrying the ball a little bit. First, standing on your shoulders. Yeah, taking yeah, it further. I think that's exactly what it's going to be. And actually, Trevor is one of those. One of yeah. Those <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, look at this. Trevor, Parker. What's up, man? How you doing, man? Hey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wow, yeah. holy cow. The foam is... Yeah, Tanner, uh, going great. Oh, nice. That, that, that looks like Tanner, man. Dude, that looks awesome. I, I'm doing that at my home right now, yeah, watching yeah. one of his videos. But the great stuff foam and all that, that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. That looks really good. Already show, and we decided to reuse them in here. Just kind of create a little Stonehenge type yeah. of a look. And hey, it's a construction office. Yeah, it looks great. It's just rough and rugged and live edge tables and all that type of well, stuff. This is like, there's like multiple offices in oh, here, totally. right? It's like there, there's it really is. a we bunch have, going on. Up and back as well, which is what I wanted to do. Oh, uh, yeah. We started and we kind of just stopped. Yeah. Yeah, but it is. It's, it kind of evolves and it moves and it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Did you put this moss here? Is this? Uh, we started it and then it just takes Holy off. Holy cow. Yeah. Once I it could, gets going, it's, I could definitely get behind that. It's, That's ha amazing. it's happy. You know, you start out with a little bit and it just goes. Yeah. Are, are you calling that a pondless waterfall? It or? is. Okay. Yeah. Yep, okay. so that's got that underground reservoir. Yeah. And we could recirculate water. Tip, is there a typical, like, if, if it's this big, the reservoir is going to be double or? Um, yeah, typically this one is way undersized. Okay. Um, but yeah, we do have formulations for it. So um, it's basically, it goes off of the flow rate of it. So the more flow that goes through it, the higher your evaporation. Okay. So the number that I use is one half of one, a uh, half of a percent of the flow rate per hour per day of evaporation. <laughs> yeah. So, you got that at home, guys? Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, different little waterfall set up. Yeah. Bubbling rocks, looks like there's this might, it looks like it probably has a leak because they are doing a test. Okay. So they're bypassing the top waterfall. So for some reason, I have no oh, idea what these are. Yeah, just a little bowl, reservoirs. Oh. Water lettuce. I love the way water lettuce looks. Oh, it's awesome. So isn't good. It? So this is open to the public. So okay. people come here on weekends and just kind of walk around. Oh, no way, man. That's so cool. And, right? Be a great place to take a date or get right. some lunch or yeah all different water features around every corner yeah do 170 pounds of cubic foot for granite granite is it more like dense is it more compact more dense okay yes. uh different different um different uh, molecular structure sure. nice so this rock is a little bit bigger than that other one but try to move that one Let's see if i can get in here uh, yeah that's a heavy rock. So it yeah. it actually will almost it almost clanks metallically sometimes. Am I um, seeing metal in there? This is, that... is that's iron. Yeah. Uh, so it is iron ore inside of it. But this is over 200 pounds a cubic foot. Jeez. So it's 25 percent heavier than that other stone. <laughs> that's amazing. So this stuff hard to work with, very heavy, destroys trucks and equipment. Looks amazing. Uh, but though. It looks awesome. Looks so good. Oh, that's this always is how it goes. From north, central Wisconsin. Things that look the most, uh, the yeah. prettiest. Are... There's, there's like a unique vein of this stuff in central Wisconsin. Oh, okay. So a lot of it. Okay. Um, but it's, I mean, that's it's why you guys cool. got more here of this stuff, yeah. then, because it's beautiful it's, and. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, my pond at my old house was made out of this. I loved okay. it. It was awesome. The sandbox studio. Oh, okay. What we call the sandbox. So we had a whole facade of a home built right. inside of our warehouse. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'll put up um, black felt around the whole thing so you don't see the warehouse at okay. all. 
we'll bring in all, we, we had hundreds of live trees that we brought in, all types of plants. We would design and build water features in here, but it looked like it was in somebody's backyard. Yeah. So like a studio set. So I want to live here, man. This is... Oh, now we got the little man cave actually <laughs> over on this side. I love that. But we wanted to make a usable space. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this, yeah, I like said they took the tank down because no one was back there using it anymore. Right. Um, but fish tank in here, a little bar set up, outdoor seating. Every every week this was completely transformed into a, a, a unique aquatic ecosystem back here. Dude, there's a blanding turtle up there. Holy cow. <laughs> That's awesome. Man, I love that. Another one of these guys. Yeah. Beautiful picture. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, well, Ed, uh, so for those watching, I'm sure if you're watching this, you know Ed already, but just reach 50,000 subscribers, man, yes. that's huge. I love that. Thank love you. promoting that just because the, the amount of knowledge and we were talking earlier about how I'm excited even when private companies do what I think the government companies should be doing right. with the knowledge and all that stuff. And I love to see people working together. So it's awesome, man. Thanks for doing what yeah, you do. It's my pleasure. I appreciate it. Yeah.